If you've ever watched a knife review and wondered just how small the reviewer's hands are, smack the like button because you, my friend, are in good company. I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And if you could, let me know in the comments section down below. When was the last time you bought a knife based on a review and you found out that apparently that reviewer's hands are eh, a little bit on the small side? While you're down there, if you could smack up that like button, show some love, I would greatly appreciate it. Today, we're talking about this guy. This is the Mallory Designs Forest. And shout out to Mallory Designs and the Apex Pass Round Group for getting this piece in my hands. I appreciate it. Now, premium materials, premium price tag, but is the knife actually premium? Did they do a bang up job? Did they do as good as my like button? Today, we're gonna talk about it. This is the Mallory Designs for us. Let's go. All right, guys, so it's time to go ahead and talk about this knife. And I'm not one for unboxing, so I already took it out of the package. However, in this box is the Mallory Designs Forest. This specific one has a card. It's got some stuff blacked out, but this is the original Forest. It's a prototype. And you know what's kind of interesting about this knife is, is that uh, I didn't even get to see this one release. Um, this was, you know, of course, part of the Apex Pass Round. And then all of a sudden I'm looking on his website and I see that he's got the Forest V2 pre-orders going, which is bananas because I never really saw this one land. So to be quite honest with you, I'm not entirely positive if what happened was that the original Forest was more of just a prototype and the V2 is the finished product that is being shipped out and sold to everybody. Wow. Okay. so. Let's take a look at this design language first and foremost. We have this OG style carbon fiber inlay and I'm not feeling any gaps. That inlay is perfectly snug. It is in fact a liner lock. Now I'm not entirely sure if that's a steel liner or if that is a titanium liner. Um, I'm going to assume steel and if I'm right, I'm happy with that. I actually do prefer steel liners to titanium liners on liner locks because you don't have to worry about the titanium wearing down over time and it's just smoother on the get. From the start, we've got this kind of polished looking titanium on the handle scales and S35VN on the blade. Now, I do want to point out that the V2s are going to ship with S90V, which is definitely a big improvement from S35VN. And not that there's anything wrong with S35VN. It's actually one of my favorite steels. It's, you know, got good edge retention. It's got decent toughness and it's very corrosion resistant. So I like S35VN, but let's not get it twisted. S90V is the steel that M390 wants to be. It's extremely corrosion resistant and has an amazing edge retention. So yeah, if you're looking at buying one of these or getting in on the pre-order, I don't, have an, I don't have an affiliate link, but I will go ahead and link it to the pre-order in case you wanna check out one of those. And now I'm strongly considering reaching out to uh, Dylan Mallory to see if he might have a V2 that he'd be willing to let me review. That would be pretty cool, eh? Let me know in the comments section down below if you think that I should get the V2 to feature here on the channel. Uh, going back to the design flow, I absolutely love how nicely polished everything is. It does make that blade a bit of a fingerprint magnet, but honestly, who cares? Uh, it does have a nice satin finish and that does look very much like, yep, it is very much a satin flat grind finish on the blade. There we go. We've got a single-sided captive pivot, hallelujah. The fact that knives are still made today uh, with a free spinning pivot or uh, it, it just bothers me. So I love seeing single-sided captive pivots. 
This one is not made here in the United States. This one is made in China. And if I if I'm correct, I believe that it's made by Riot, which I'm okay with. Riot does some fantastic work. We get this nice milled titanium pocket clip and I have put it in and out of my pocket. It works very, very well. Something I'm not a huge fan of, at least on this one, is, is that T6 body screws with a T8 pivot. It's 2023. Can we move away from the T6 body screws, please? And some of you who don't take their knives apart don't understand why this is such a pain in the butt. With a smaller screw type, you're going to be able to strip those screws a lot more easily. It does have a titanium backspacer, which is nice. I like that because it's going to protect the edge of this blade. This has a decently wide edge bevel, which is going to be great for edge retention and also sliciness. And guys, this is not super thick at the blade spine. It is nice and pointy. The blade shape actually kind of reminds me of the Tempest Pinion, but maybe it's because the Pinion is also a liner lock with a deployment hole only option. However, it is different. It's just reminiscent of the Tempest Pinion. I had to mention that. Uh, that pocket clip is reversible. Something that does kind of bug me is the fact that we don't have a tab there. Like, Give me a filler tab. Um, I absolutely support making pocket clips ambidextrous. You know, put it on the other side. Put the, sh the shoe on the other foot, if you would. I think that it's kind of loud to just have that empty slot there. At the very least, we need some screws to go in there. Now, it is entirely possible that when these ship, it will have a filler tab or it will have placeholder screws or thread protectors. It, that's very possible. I can't guarantee it. I don't know. I didn't get this from Dylan Mallory. I got this from the Apex Pass Round Group. But I'd love to have that conversation with him if he ever watches this video, which I doubt it. But if he did, that'd be pretty cool. Um, moving on to the ergonomics. Because everything is nicely knocked down, the ergonomics on here are perfect. Even without choking up, I can get a full four finger grip. If I do choke up, I can go even farther. Now the bane of my existence is continuing because there is absolutely no jimping on here, which I have, I don't understand why. This knife is very smooth and slick and polished. Some jimping would have gone a long way and I would have preferred to have seen it go the length of the deployment hole. That would have been absolutely perfect. Is it a major issue? No, absolutely not. But I'm someone that really, really, really believes in having as much control over that edge as you humanly can and that jimping makes that more possible this does not have it nor does it have a crown spine which i kind of wish that it did you know if you're going to take away my beloved jimping at least give me a crown spine uh, i know it sounds like i'm being harsh but guys these are all nitpicks okay this knife has a lot of really good positives things like the milled 3d titanium pocket clip and the backspacer uh, things like ceramic bearings, which make the action extremely smooth. The detent is nice and clicky. And while it is possible to fail this, you would have to actively be trying to fail it because even the, with the tiniest amount of pressure, the moment you get over that detent, uh, it's going to flick out. And that's pretty cool. In a reverse grip, feels nice and natural. No issues there whatsoever. It just feels great. Let's do a quick size comparison. We'll go ahead and compare it up against the Spyderco Manix 2, which I'm doing more comparisons on these days because people really seem to be flocking to this Spyderco knife. It's, it's weird. It's like, you know, a very popular reviewer said that this was his favorite Spyderco, and now all of a sudden everyone agrees, even though they didn't, you know, three, four, five years ago, however long it's been since this came out. Uh, so, I'm comparing it against this guy because everyone seems to have one now. Uh, the Manix 2 is a bit longer, but not by too terribly much. As far as thickness goes, the Manix 2 is also going to be just a bit thicker, not by a huge amount. So it's relatively thin. It fits in the pocket well. It's a liner lock that you can, in fact, switch this clip over to the other side, and it's got this really nice 
polished finish. And I can't help but notice my fingerprints, which bug me because that polished finish is actually really nice uh, when it doesn't have fingerprints on it. They do make this, by the way, in a blacked out blade. I believe it's DLC coated. I could be wrong. It's either DLC or PVD. Um, let's talk about the price. Since you can't buy the regular Forest right now, you can only do the pre-order for the Forest V2, which I believe has fat carbon inlays, if I'm not mistaken. You might wonder how much that's going to set you back. $325. I'll say that again. The forest will set you back $325. So is it worth it? Ultimately, that's going to be up to you. Um, am I going to buy one of these? No, but it's not because I don't want one. It's because I don't have $325 to throw at one, which is why I'm getting this from the Apex Pass Around group so that I can at least put it on the channel. But I would love to have one of my own. I really enjoy that action. The pocket clip is great. I like the hardware minus the T6 body screws. And even though it doesn't have jimping, it is something that I could live with. That is relatively a minor gripe. In the end, I think that this is a beautiful knife and I think that you could do a lot worse for $325. So if you have that kind of money to blow, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe give it a shot. But you let me know. What do you think of the Mallory Forest? Are you going to pick one up on pre-order? Have you already put your order in or are you going to be staying away from this one? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. And guys, if you watched this far and you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and tap the notification bell. I'm Rolshambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.